All right, so now we're gonna put it all together. I'm gonna to walk you through a couple that I did. Um, this is just an enamel pan. And the first thing I like to do once I have the container prepped and ready to go, I add the plant material. So here I've just added some sedum and a few Johnny Jump Ups. And then I chose to cover the soil next. I think that's one of the keys to creating a very um, complete looking fairy garden is that you don't wanna see any bare soil anywhere. So in this case, I chose to use the moss covered bark that I found in my woods to cover up most of the soil. And then you add in your large pieces. So for this house, I added a moss ball that I had at home that I had made previously. And I added a little wood chip for the door and a very simple table. The table is just a, a kind of a small rock with a little piece of bark over it and two little stones for stools. And then lastly, you would add in any of the, your finer details. So I added in some plumes of dried grass here at the back. Now I just poked those in by the stem. So you should understand those are not going to stay put. Um, I did not permanently attach them and I understood that at some point they're gonna blow away. And that's okay with me because then I'll find something else I like in, during the season and I'll tuck that in instead. And at the front, I just added, um, one of those milk pod weed, uh, milk weed pods, the dried one, I thought the fairies might like to use that as a well or a swimming pool or a pond or something like that. So that one is complete from scratch. Um, and it's a fairly simple one. I didn't overdo it, which is a easy to do when you get excited about fairy gardens. So it's important not to add too many things to one garden, but instead make lots and lots of gardens. This one is a garden that's been at my house for a couple of years now and it desperately needs some attention. You can see I have a lot of dead plant material in this. Um, there's a few hens and chicks that survived the winter um, and the bird's nest had been holding up. It'd been in there for a couple of years, but winter was not its friend this year and it's starting to fall apart. So let's take a look at how to rebuild it. First, you need to remove all of your dead plant material as well as the old soil. There's not really any nutrients left in that, so I'm going to take it all out and add in new soil and new plants. Some of these are transplants from other containers. Some were purchased, but they're all in the succulent family, so they all have similar needs. And then I made a little fairy door at that workshop from a couple years ago, and I used that at the back side of this fairy garden. And then finally, I added in all of the finer details. So you can see I've added in some rocks here. I love collecting rocks. So I put that little trio in there. And then the seashell that I had, I turned it up, um, inverted it so it could collect water. Again, thinking the fairies need water and they can use it how they like. Um, and I also added in some dried hydrangea, which is really a pretty flower, um, and it helped to fill in some of the gaps where the soil was still showing through. Again, I did not permanently attach this hydrangea though, so understand that that will blow away. The cats get up in here sometimes too, so they're gonna knock it out. But I know that these other plants are gonna continue to grow throughout the season, so they should start to fill in the gaps that I was trying to cover up with that. And I thought it might be fun to take you on a little fairy view of if a fairy were to approach this, what it might look like. And as I promised earlier, um, fairies can be very practical. So this is an herb garden. It's a container. I mentioned that I grow herbs outside my kitchen door and throughout the summer I'm going out to collect fresh herbs for whatever I'm cooking inside. So this is a container that I had that I've put in some lemon thyme, a little curly parsley, and some flat leaf parsley. And there's nothing to say that this can't be a fairy garden too. So I used that bark that I showed you earlier. Um, it already looked like it had a door in it that I really liked and just propped that at the back of the container. I added some teasel in as a little detail there. And again, remember, it's really covering the soil up that's gonna make this look very complete. So this one I used peach pits. 
a couple of years ago, I canned a whole bunch of peaches and I had all the pits and I, they find them kind of interesting looking. So I let the, any peach flesh that was still on it waste away. The insects enjoyed that and I kept all the pits and I've been using those as mulch since then. So in this case, I thought that might be a fun little walkway or patio made of peach pits for the fairies. <laughs> 